Hello and welcome to this webinar today where we talk about the Tungsten Cluster AMI that's available for you to use right now in the Amazon Marketplace. My name is Chris Parker, I'm Customer Success Director for EMEA and APAC, and I'm going to take you through this little getting started guide um, and explain how you can leverage the, the benefits of Cluster um, through, the, through the AMI. So a few topics. Uh, first of all, we'll just review and understand what tungsten clustering is. So if you're not familiar with the product, this will be useful to, to understand what it can do for you. And then we'll actually dig into the AMI, how you can deploy and configure a cluster using the AMI, and also how you can do the same, but through the, the cloud formation approach. Um, we'll do a demonstration, and then we'll just, it's just a short session on, on how to set this up. So first of all, tungsten clustering. So it's important to know um, the, the, the background of what we're doing. And um, so I'm just going to quickly cover um, the, the, the two products, tungsten clustering and tungsten dashboard. Um, dashboard I'm including because that is part of the, the AMI offering, which will become clearer as we, as we get into the, the, the weeds of, of that particular uh, topic. So first of all, tungsten clustering. So it's a fully integrated, fully tested MySQL HA ADR geo-distributed clustering solution that we can run on-prem or in the cloud supporting business critical MySQL applications. Obviously we're focusing on the cloud in this session, specifically AWS. However, the, the concepts and functionality is the same regardless. So if you are interested in uh, tungsten clustering in Google Cloud, for example, or Azure, or on your on-premise environment, you know, still watch this, um, you may learn from it, and then you can come and talk to us and we can help you in those, in those environments. So some of the, the key benefits, um, so continuous MySQL operations, uh, we offer zero downtime maintenance, um, as I mentioned, uh, geo-distributed clusters as well, um, also multi-cloud, hybrid cloud, so although we're talking specifically about AWS today, you could have clusters that span um, AWS and Azure, or AWS and Google, or any combination, uh, or also a combination of hybrid, so one cluster on-premise and a cluster in the cloud. The cluster has an intelligent proxy or tungsten connector that offers intelligent read-write splitting to enable your applications to to horizontally scale if needs be and to, to make the, the most of the, the nodes within the cluster for reads. And full MySQL support. Um, so you know, it's, it's very simple. Uh, you don't need to make any significant application changes. Um, you, know, you can just plug and play and, and away you go. The AMI um, is distributed with the community edition of MySQL. Um, however, you can use Pacona, you can use MariaDB, you can use Enterprise MySQL. You know, we, we, we work across all of the, the variants. Tungsten Dashboard is a uh, simple GUI interface that enables you to manage your clusters. Okay, it's very simple. Um, you can manage the entire Tungsten estate. If you have multiple, um, multiple clusters running for different applications, you can group them all together and bring them into that one single dashboard view. Um, simple point click operations, easily identify broken components, uh, it's very simple and lightweight setup. As, as, as I mentioned, it's included as part of the AMI. We do have another product, Tungsten Replicator. Um, I'm not uh, discussing it specifically here. Obviously, Tungsten Replicator is key to clustering as that is how the data moves, um, but also the Tungsten Replicator can be used as a standalone product. That is also available as an AMI, as a standalone uh, replicator product. And um, we have a separate session discussing that if you're interested. Um, but obviously, yeah, it's, it is key to clustering, but it's not... Um, for this particular session, uh, we don't go into that, that level of detail. So let's have a quick look at the, the, the various topologies that are available with the AMIs, or in fact, that are available with uh, tungsten clustering. First of all, we have a simple standalone cluster. Um, so typically, um, you need a minimum of three nodes. Okay, so if you're familiar with clustering, you'll be familiar with Quorum. Um, Quorum enables you to ensure you have a majority vote in the case of failures, so on each node. 
we have a manager process and the manager process um, is responsible for making those key decisions in, in the event of failures amongst other things. Um, so with three nodes, you have quorum um, and therefore um, when voting takes place, you always get a majority vote. You could have more nodes um, providing you go up in, in odd numbers. So three, um, you could have five nodes, seven nodes, etc. Um, but it always needs to be an odd. Um, one node will be your primary, the other nodes will be your replicas, and then you will have tungsten connector sitting outside of that. This diagram shows one connector. With the AMI, you will get one connector per database node, um, and those connectors offer your applications the, the ability to connect through to your cluster without actually having to know or care about which node is primary, which nodes are replicas. The, the connectors will do all of that for you. Um, I don't go into detail in this session about how connectors work um, and all the various options. We do have uh, many blog posts, webinars, and, and we also have um, quite an intensive uh, clustering masterclass training program um, that if you're interested in, you can follow uh, where you can learn a lot more about uh, about connectors and, and even a lot more about clustering and, and how to manage and um, and administer administer a cluster. So if you if you go down this route, you know, I would recommend you you check out that training program. The other um, topology is our active passive cluster. So this is where we start looking at the geo distributed um, HA capabilities. Um, so you would have a minimum of two clusters. Uh, we have some customers that have five clusters. Um, so you know you can build up the number of clusters that you wish. The same rules apply for each cluster. So each cluster must have a minimum um, three nodes and there must be an odd number of nodes per cluster. Um, one cluster will be the active cluster, and that will be where all of the writes go, okay? So your connectors will know which cluster is active, which node is the primary, and will automatically send your writes to that primary node. All other nodes, including in the other cluster, they will be replicas, they will be available for reads. Um, so you could have reads from your remote passive cluster whilst writes are still going into your active cluster. In the passive clusters, we have what we call the relay node. The relay node will be the um, will, will be will take on the primary role if the clusters are promoted into uh, into an active cluster. So in this case, if this passive cluster was promoted to be the active cluster, the relay node would become the primary, and in the old active cluster, the primary node would become the relay. We have asynchronous replication between the clusters, and we also have asynchronous replication between all the nodes within the cluster. Now I mentioned this is where we can start doing geo-distributed, so your passive clusters can be in different regions. Um, you know, they can be in different countries, uh, they can be you know, geo-distributed, but this gives you HA capability, so you have one active and one passive or more. The next topology is active-active. So this takes on a similar concept to the active-passive. However, all clusters here are active and will take writes. So we have bidirectional asynchronous replication between clusters. Um, we all have primaries that take writes from the local connectors. Um, reads can come from any connector. In the event of the loss of, a, of an entire cluster, the connectors here will know and then they can reroute your writes to another active cluster that is available if needed. So the cluster AMI, uh, what is the, the AMI? Well, it's available now via the Amazon Marketplace. Um, it launches um, on Amazon Linux. And we have two AMIs available. We have one that is pre-configured with MySQL 5.7 and one that is configured with MySQL 8.0. Once you've subscribed, you have two ways of launching AMIs. Um, you can either follow a manual launch method, uh, which I will show in the demonstration. Um, and that, that is, you know, you launch the, the clusters, the, sorry, you, you launch each individual node, as many as you need um, in whatever regions you want make sure all of the networking and communication between those nodes is configured. And then you can run the, the very simple to follow launch wizard to configure them. Or if you didn't want to go down that route, you could use CloudFormation, 
which will deploy the full stack. And I'll, I'll come on to that in the next few slides. With either of these methods, the cluster will be up and running in minutes. It's very, very simple and straightforward. Um, as I mentioned, also, they include the, the dashboard um, that will be up and running um, upon launch. And it's cheap. Um, hourly pricing, which is the, pretty much the same for most AMIs in, in AWS, um, starting at 55 cents per hour per node. That doesn't include your EC2 costs. So depending upon the size of node that you launch, you need to factor in your EC2 costs. So that, that price there is for the, the clustering only. Um, there are options to do annual subscriptions um, with discounts. And we also allow you to have free access to continuance support for the first 14 days. So after the 14 days are up, you will be, um, it's unsupported from our, our perspective. If you are interested in um, bolting on um, support with your clusters, contact us, uh, we can arrange that. Um, obviously there are, there'll be fees involved in that, but we can do that, arrange that separately. Um, if you, the, the support, just to give you an idea, um, we are, um, we think of ourselves as the best in business, um, industry best support, uh, all of our engineers, uh, more than 20 years um, experience working with MySQL databases, um, you know, in, close to 10 years or more, um, in some cases, working with Tungsten. And our average response times for urgent cases um, within minutes. I think the last quarter, our average response time for urgent cases was just under three minutes. So if you take support, you know you're going to get the best, um, the best help possible to keep your, your systems running. For the AMIs, we also do offer a free trial. Um, if you contact Continuous Sales, the, the details are at the, the end of this session, uh, we can arrange that for you so that you can uh, run a POC in your environment. So manual deployment. Um, so just to, to recap here, you need to subscribe to the AMI. You launch as many individual instances as you need, remembering three instances per cluster. You need to manually configure the network according to your own business requirements. Um, make sure all the security rules are set up between the nodes. Once you've done that, you connect to each node, follow the launch wizard, and your cluster is running. Through the CloudFormation deployment, you still need to subscribe to the AMI initially. Once you've subscribed, you can launch the CloudFormation um, based on whichever required topology. So we have three URLs here, uh, single cluster, active passive, or active active click the, you know, follow the, the URL for the cluster that you want, uh, complete the template, click the launch button, and away you go. Within a few minutes, your entire cluster and dashboard will be up and running. But the CloudFormation builds an entire stack, okay? So you don't need to worry about networking or security groups. The CloudFormation will do all of that for you. It will do the VPCs, the internet gateways, and we will also distribute the hosts across um, zones. Uh, to, to give you extra extra protection. The only caveat with cloud formation is if you wish to choose active active or active passive, at the moment with cloud formation, it can only go into the same region. So um, if you, for example, are wanting to launch an active plus passive geo distributed uh, topology where uh, one cluster is in US East, for example, and another cluster is in Europe, you would need to follow the manual deployment method and launch your AMIs in the relevant regions. Okay, so um, yeah, so you can use, by all means, use the cloud formation if you want to do it as a POC and testing for your active, 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 passive. Um, but if you want the geo distributed um, benefits, you, you need to follow the, the manual steps at this time. We are um, we are working on this to, to make it easier to do geo distribution through cloud formation, but it, it's just not there right now. So I mentioned um, how we set up the, uh, the internet gateways. So it's just a, a very simple explanation of a um, standard single three node cluster. Um, so you would have two AZs, 
uh, in one AZ you would have a primary and one replica, in the other AZ you would have the other replica. This gives you the protection, so if we lost AZ1, for example, you still have a node in AZ2, which would become the primary, and your cluster would still be in, in operation. So you're protected from, from failures. If you're doing the um, active-active or active-passive topologies, we would span across three AZs and we'd distribute the nodes accordingly across, across three AZs. Okay, so let's, uh, let's dive into the, the demonstration. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need to do is to subscribe to the AMI, and this is relevant um, regardless of whether you're doing the, the manual launch or whether you're going to use the, the CloudFormation templates, you need to subscribe first. So first head to the AWS Marketplace. Uh, if you just search in there Tungsten, it will bring up a number of AMIs. Obviously you can see we have AMIs here for the standalone replicator as well. And if you're interested in knowing more about that, we do have some sessions on this in the uh, Replicator Masterclass. So feel free to go in and, and watch those as well. But look down here and you'll find tungsten clustering for MySQL 5.7 and tungsten clustering for MySQL 8. So whichever version of MySQL you want to run, click the AMI and then click continue to subscribe. So all of the information is on here, explains everything you need to know. There's links to documentation, um, estimating your costs if you wish to do that um, and, and all the various support information and you know the, the usual terms and conditions so when you're happy click continue to subscribe now the view that I get here is slightly different because I'm obviously continuing running it from our own continuing account so I get a slightly different view to what you will see but when you you're happy with the uh, details on here you accept the, the uh, subscription and you continue to configuration now this is a screen here, you can either choose to configure it through the web interface um, or you can choose to launch it through your own EC2 dashboard. So first of all, I'm just gonna choose my region, EU London, and I'm gonna say continue to launch. But I'm actually going to, rather than launch from website, I'm actually gonna launch through EC2. I, I, it's just a, my own preferred choice to do that. Whichever way you want to launch it, is that it doesn't make any difference, just launch whichever approach you wish to take. So this brings us up into the, the EC2 launch. I'm going to choose T2 medium as my size. Um, you know, I don't need to do any bigger for a demo environment like this. Um, it, T2 medium should be fine for very small workloads and for test development environments. If you're doing large production environments, then, you know, you probably know um, the best instance size for your environment. So choose whichever is applicable for you. Okay. You'll notice small micro and nano are grayed out. And that's because we've chosen to not allow the AMI to launch on those instance sizes. We know that it won't work. Well, it'll work, but it will give you more issues than it will uh, give you benefits. Uh, that they're just not powerful enough to run MySQL instances with binary logging, with tungsten. It's just too much. Medium is fine for, for this kind of development and test. So select your environment, uh, select next. So how many instances? So in this manual launch demo, I'm just going to do a single standalone cluster. So I'm just going to choose three instances. If you're doing um, anything else, obviously six, nine, whatever you want, make sure it's an odd number though. Remember the, the rules, um, minimum three per cluster and odd numbers per cluster. So just instance size there, and then set up all your various other options. So I'm going to choose VPC training because that's the VPC that I've pre-configured. Remember with a manual launch, you have to pre-configure all of this yourself, um, which in one way that gives you a benefit to be able to put it into your own pre-configured uh, VPCs, um, but just you know, bear that in mind, you need to do that. Um, once you're happy with that, add storage. By default, um, the AMI will launch with 40 gig. That's fine. Um, you know, leave that as it is if that's okay for your requirements. Add more, increase the size, add new volumes. Do whatever you need to do to get this ready for for your instance you know, based on based on what your use case is. Add tags if you need them. Security group. So security group is important. Um, 
you remember we talked about um, how you need to pre-configure everything with a manual launch so therefore you need to set up the security groups you need to set up the the port ranges for your environment now for quick and simple uh, demo i've created a group here already um, and this is what it looks like so i've set up the various ports required for the rmi ports the database ports dashboard ports manager ports thl etc so this is this is a good um, starting point and um, i'm going to leave this showing right now for a little bit so if you want to take a, a screenshot or pause the video make a note do whatever you want to do to to capture that information if you want to set up your security groups the same feel free to do so now um, this will really help you uh, to get this set up first um, you know the number of times um, you know one of the most common problems we have sometimes with new installations is that the, the network or the the firewall ports have not been configured correctly okay so it, it's really important to make sure you get this right these ports are listed in the prerequisites in our online documentation so um, you know do make sure you you make a note of that and, and capture that information Okay, so I think you've got enough time to do your screenshots if you need to. Uh, I will now move on, review and launch. So here we go, we can just review everything we've set up. Um, security groups are there, instance details, etc. And when you're happy, click launch, choose your security key that you're going to use for this, acknowledge it and launch those instances. This will return us in a moment to the uh, instance view so if we do view instances and we can see we've got these three instances loading here now so i'm just gonna i'm just gonna call these db1 uh, db2 db3 obviously i've got other bits in here just i don't want to muddy it all up so i'll just name them uh, if i can actually do it properly and uh, we'll click that one we'll call that db2 and uh, we'll call that db1 okay let's just sort this so there we go db1 two and three so now they're running now what we need to do is we actually need to connect to these so you have your public ip address uh, that's what you need to do your ssh connection to um, it's also worth making a note of the private ip address and um, you will need that during the configuration so take a copy of the private ips for each instance okay there is another easier way to get that um, once you've connected the instances and I'll, I'll show you that in a second so what i'm now going to do is i'm going to launch my um, terminal session and we will connect to these instances okay so here i have my terminal session uh, so let's connect to those instances uh, so first of all ssh minus i dot ssh uh, the training key that I used, which is that one. Uh, so first of all, connect as the EC2 user. Uh, and then we need to put in the IP addresses. So let's grab those from our dashboard. That's, uh, that's DB1. And let's grab DB2. And let's finally grab DB3. Okay. And let's connect to those and let's just accept that okay and we're connected so first of all you'll see this just welcome message thank you for choosing it um, run sudo su tungsten to get started so i'm just going to do one host at a time so when you do the manual launch like this the first thing is just do one host first okay so i'm going to do the host in the middle just for simplicity so run sudo su minus tungsten okay this will launch kind of like a a readme I, I guess for want of a better word um, just to highlight some of the things we've talked about make sure you've got your network set up explains what the wizard will do for you um, and then we'll say are you ready to proceed so just say yes okay so it says uh, current host name is this and this is the current IP address do we want to change the host name or do we want to just accept that one so I'm going to change the host name and this middle one here is what we was going to identify as DB2 so let's say DB2 and it's changed the host name so we'll actually do that for you or do the relevant um, changes on the host itself so you don't need to worry about that do we want to enable SSL security? I'm going to say no, but if you want SSL enabled, say yes, um, and it will explain the, the steps that you need to do at the end for that. What kind of cluster are we enabling? Standalone, active passive, or active active? So I'm just going to do a standalone cluster, so number one. And then how many nodes are in the cluster? So we have three nodes. 
and what is the service name of the cluster so if you remember um, from previous training sessions or if you're not familiar with tungsten we we have a service name um, a service name needs to be unique for the cluster so in this instance i'm just going to call it alpha which is my kind of default demo service name uh, will host db2 be the primary or a replica node um, now we can either say p for primary or e for replica i'm actually going to say this is going to be a replica node so now it says okay what is going to be the host name of the primary node so i'm going to make db1 the primary node so db1 and it wants to know what the ip address for db1 is now this is where i mentioned just a moment ago this is the private ip not the public ip fortunately by default instances um, their host name has the private IP in the, the host name. So if you didn't copy it from the dashboard and you don't have it to hand, just look at the host name here on the prompt and type it in. So it's going to be 10 dot not hyphen 46 dot one dot 63. Great. So replica node one for alpha will be the host row one DB2. So enter the host name of replica node two, which is going to be this host here on the right, which we're going to call DB3. And again, what is the IP address for that? So that's going to be 10 46 1 120. Okay, what's the THL port going to be? So we're going to leave that as the default 2112. Um, so just press enter to accept the default. If you want to change it, that's fine. But remember, if you change it, your security group needs to make sure that you have that different port set up. Um, what port is my SQL on? So the instances on these boxes have been pre-configured and they're currently running on port 13306. Um, if you are happy with that, press enter. If you want to change the port that the database is running on, then enter the, the port here, but make sure that you make that change before you continue. Okay, so you'll need to make the, the underlying MySQL change before you do any configuration. Otherwise, accept the default 13306. The connectors are going to run on 3306 by default. Um, the connectors are the, the proxy which your applications will connect to. They need to be on a different port to MySQL. So again, you can change this if you want, as long as it is not the same port as your MySQL database. So I will leave it as the default 3306. So by default, connectors are enabled in bridge mode. Do we want to switch to proxy mode? So if I say yes, it will then say, okay, we need a, um, you know, you're now in proxy mode. So do we want to enable a read only port to redirect read only queries to replica nodes? Um, so I, I recommend that if you've not watched the uh, training sessions on the connector yet, go ahead. Uh, that will explain a little bit more about the various proxy modes, read-only ports, etc. Um, so I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but I'm just going to say yes, we want a read-only port, and by default I'm going to leave the read-only port as 3307. Um, log retention for THL, uh, do we want to leave that seven days or do we want to increase it or decrease it? I'm actually going to increase it to 10 days. Um, database user. So by default, uh, we create a database user called Tungsten, and this is what the managers and the replicators will connect to the database as. Um, so we'll accept the default, and let's put in a password for it, and the, the wizard will actually create this user for you. And then we have a default uh, database user for the connectors, um, a default app user, uh, password for that, and we'll create this user for you as well. And then the dashboard. So dashboard will have a user called Tungsten and we just need to set the password for that user now. So we'll pop that password in there. Okay, so what it has now done is the wizard will now connect to DB1 locally to DB2, DB3 to the actual MySQL database. It's not going over SSH, it's just connecting into the databases, making sure they're up and running and creating the users that we need. Okay, it's enabling um, HTTPD access control for the dashboard so it's set that to user it's configured HA proxy to start up for the dashboard um, and it's basically restarted MySQL to apply changes and what it has done with MySQL there is it's changed the um, the server ID. So each individual instance in MySQL needs a unique server ID. So what it has done is it's configured the server ID for this instance and restarted it so it takes effect. It will have written into the local database um, a couple of tables and all of the responses you provided earlier in this wizard will have been written into internal tables in each database. Okay. Um, and then what will happen is when we run 
uh, the configuration on DB1 and DB3, it will read that information out of the database. So first of all, uh, this is saying, would we like to start the installation now? So if I say yes, it will now go ahead and it will run the tools TPM install. Or if I say no, we then have to run these steps manually ourselves. So I'm actually going to say yes. And let's, let's allow TPM to run itself. So if you're familiar with installation, this is now just doing the, the tools TPM install configuring the software, putting everything in place and, and setting it all up. It won't start the software yet, it will just do the installation. Take a moment or two. Okay, everything is finished. So the uh, installations run clean and then we see the next steps. So if there were any errors up here, you would need to go and fix them. Errors typically will be things um, on, on the AMI, if you see an error, it would probably typically be related to network. Okay, so that's the only kind of thing that will probably fail in this instance. Um, it now says uh, log into the remaining hosts and run uh, the, the install. So what we do now is we log into here and we'll do sudo su minus tungsten. And as I said, because this is detected, um, let me just do the, the, the welcome bit first, so yes on that. Um, it will connect to the local database and it will have found the configuration that was uh, set up from DB2. So it has now gone through and done um, all the various local configurations. So we don't need to do all of these questions and answer, you know, put all the information in. It's pulled it out of the database and it's reconfigured for us. So we can say yes on there and we can let the, uh, the tools TPM install happen on there now. And when that's finished, we can do the same over here. So sudo su minus tungsten. Um, what I would recommend is um, if one of your hosts is doing tools TPM install like this, just wait before you run the wizard on the other nodes because part of this wizard will restart the database on this host. And if the tools TPM is at that moment checking connectivity, it may error out if it just happens to hit it when the restart's happening. So just do one at a time. Um, so again, over here, we'll say yes to the wizard, pulls the information from the local database, and then we can say yes to do the install. So whilst that's running, I will just show you over here what has happened. If we go to, uh, ETC Tungsten, we have created the Tungsten INI with all of the information that you provided. Okay, um, so the, the host names, which host was the primary, log retention that we increased, um, we've set up the read-only port 3307, so that has all been set up for you. Okay, and we have also configured the hosts file, that's all been set up for you there. Okay, this host is finished now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to exit out here and I'm just going to reconnect as Tungsten. This will just reload the environment because we've set up the uh, env.sh script as mentioned here. So I've logged out and logged back in. If I wanted, I could have just run uh, source that script instead. Um, I just find log out, log in is, is easier. Um, we can see the host name has changed. That's good. So what we can do now is we've done the install, the host name has changed. Let's start the software. So we can just issue start all. We'll start the replicators, starts the managers. And then we'll start the connectors. And that's it, everything is running. We have a cluster. So if I now go on this host and I go into CCTRL, do LS, just give it a second or two to get its old metadata built up. There we go, everything is looking clean now. So DB1 is your primary, DB2, DB3 are your replicas. Your cluster is online and running. Now, if you notice at the end of the next steps, it talked about dashboard, presents you with the, uh, the IP address there. So let's go ahead and connect to that instance. So if I, I'm just going to switch my screen back to my browser. If I just uh, click the right buttons in this Zoom window, it will let me switch back. There we go. So let's open up a, uh, a new and then pop into here. And then we get the login. So tungsten, 
and the password that you set join install um, now the um, you can connect any host db1 2 or 3 doesn't matter dashboard is configured for all all of them we log in the first time you log in you will get this because it needs to do an auto configuration um, of, of the host so you'll just see that the very first time so click there and there we go we have the the cluster that we've just set up primary replica replica and all the information so if you want to now do switches and things like that let's issue a switch um, let's make sure this works and we can move the the primary node Just wait for that to, to complete. You can set auto refresh up here if you want. At the moment, auto refresh is turned off. Um, we'll just leave that turned off. But we can see the switch is completed and DB3 is now a primary. So you now have a fully running and functioning cluster and you have a fully functional dashboard and that's the manual setup okay so it is a little bit more involved you have more control over which host you want to do and, and launching it but you do need to bear in mind that the manual process um, means setting up all of the various VPCs in the network routing okay um, also if you wanted to launch a um, a multi-region cluster so the active active or active passive where you wanted um, where here I've got three hosts in London I may want my other cluster in Ireland or my other cluster in the US you would have to go through the manual route to do that okay so the the cloud formation which I will demonstrate next you won't be able to do um, do through through this route okay so what I'm now going to do is I'm just going to first of all terminate these three sessions because I don't need these anymore so we'll terminate that so yes to terminate and log out of the dashboard and next we're going to do the um, the, the cloud formation demo okay so uh, with the cloud formation, uh, you just follow one of the URLs uh, that we provide, depending upon whether you're doing a single cluster, active passive cluster or active active cluster. So I'm just going to click on the link for active passive cluster and that will open up the cloud formation stack. Now, the first thing to note is by default, it will take you to US East one. OK, so if you want to launch your active passive cluster in US East one, leave that as it is. If you want to change it, change it here. So I'm going to choose London, OK, and then it will just reload that for you. So first of all, let's change our stack name. This is just purely for the cloud formation elements. So I'm going to call it CT training and then we go into the parameters. So uh, security SSH key. So I'm going to use my training key that I had before. IP address range to grant access for SSH, HTTP, and MySQL. Um, I'm just going to leave this as everybody, and that means that I, you know, the world can connect onto SSH at the moment. Obviously, in your environment, I wouldn't recommend leaving that to everybody. Put that to the IP address, um, your own personal IP address, whatever you want. But this will open up access for you to get into the cluster once it's launched instance type and um, choose the instance type that you want and then we have the availability zones because i'm doing an active passive cluster i get three uh, availability zones so availability zone one is for the first cluster primary and first replica availability zone two is for the second um, replica nodes in both clusters and then availability zone three is for the primary and the replica of the the second cluster OK, so choose the different zones and that just gives you a bit of extra protection so that if you lost an availability zone, you don't lose your entire cluster. We then have the composite cluster name, the the um, the global level and um, global is our default. Make that whatever you wish. And then we have the, uh, the the service names for each individual cluster. So which cluster is going to be your active cluster first? Um, and I'm going to call this London. And what is our passive cluster? Uh, I'm going to call this Manchester. I'm using cities in the UK because I'm in, in the UK. So you know, just whatever you want to call those. Some people use um, names that refer to the, the, the business use case, the applications, you know, however you want to do that, that's fine. And then enter the names of the hosts. So the, uh, the three hosts in your active cluster, so in London, and your three hosts in your passive cluster, in my case, Manchester. So I'm going to leave them all the same. I'm just going to leave that as the defaults, DB1 through DB6. Um, then we can set 
the THR log retention period. So by default, seven days. Um, if you want to change that, change that here. Uh, just note here that you need to put DHM or S on to define the um, the units uh, that relate to the value. I'll just leave that as seven days. What is uh, the, the password you want to set for the MySQL root user? So if you want to change that here, we set that here. Um, and then we have the users. So the replication user, let's set the password there. And then the application user. And again, if you want to change the usernames, you can. And then we need the, the password for the, the, the dashboard user. And when you're happy with that, click create stack. So what will happen now is we will go away and we will be building everything for you. So the, the VPCs, the network port rules, the security groups um, will launch the hosts. Um, everything will be, will be there set up for you. And if you just refresh this, you will see that this will, uh, this will update. So I'm just going to pause now and wait and let that uh, finish. It shouldn't take much more than two to three minutes, depending upon you know the speed of networks, you know the regions you you've chosen, and, and all that kind of information. So let's just uh, wait for that to to f finish. Okay. CT training, which is our stack name that we gave it, create complete. When you see that, everything is finished. You can look on here for resources. It will explain everything that's been done. Um, outputs. Um, here we can see the public IP addresses of our hosts. So active primary, active replicas, passive prime, uh, passive relay, and, and replicas. So you can um, you can. Uh, use those to, to connect SSH if you wish. And then you have the dashboard URL. Click the dashboard URL and we have the tungsten user and the password we set up and say login. And there we go. Uh, the same as we saw with the manual install. Click here to get started. Loading the services. And there we go. So global, London, Manchester. Um, London is our primary service. Uh, Manchester is our replica service. And we're up and running, so that was even easier. So you know, we get less less typing, uh, one simple, easy template form to fill in, a few clicks, sit back, have a cup of tea and a coffee for a couple of minutes, and wait, and and you have a cluster up and running. Obviously, I can now you know SSH onto those hosts if I want to. Um, you you have all of that information. Sorry, that was in the in the cloud formation. You have all that information there. If I go back to my uh, EC2 dashboard and refresh it. I can see those hosts are there. If I want to, to take the IP addresses, I can do so and get all that information out. Um, it's created, you know, uh, subnets, um, security groups have been set up. Um, everything is everything is up and running and everything is ready for your application. So that's it. That that's as simple as a, a cloud formation demo is. Um, so I don't really have any more. <laughs> There's nothing more I can show you on there. I can do some switches on here if you want a you know, dashboard uh, demo. But that we have a, a session that went through dashboard. So um, so that's it. So I will now uh, switch back to my slide deck. Okay. I hope you found that useful. Um, you know, it is very, very simple, very straightforward to get the, the clusters running. Um, so let's just summarize what we've looked at today. Uh, we looked at what tungsten clustering is. Uh, we looked at the various topologies, so standalone, um, active, passive, active, active clusters. And then we we de dove in, uh, dived into the, uh, the, the cluster AMI, looked at manual deployment and configuration, and we looked at the, the cloud formation deployment as well. So what are your next steps? Well, head to AWS Marketplace, subscribe and get started today. Um, if you do have any further questions or you want to talk about a commercial subscription because you can't run in AWS, for example, um, or if you want to talk about bolting on support, reach out to us, sales at .com. Um, You know, We can answer your questions. We can help you. We can um, help you source out free trials if you wish to try this out. Um, in addition, one thing I haven't put on here, um, I mentioned um, at the beginning and I mentioned a couple of times in the in the in the actual video demonstration, um, 
that we we have training sessions where we dig into some of the concepts around connectors um, we have training sessions on on dashboard we have training sessions on how to uh, manage and administer the cluster on the command line um, you know so take a look at those training sessions uh, it's accessible via our website um, once you get them and register you, you can you can see all that information and, and follow that training program so thank you very much for your time um, our contact details here on the screen um, my name Chris Parker again my email address there if you wish to contact me directly um, you know get in touch with us for more information and uh, that concludes the session thank you for listening I um, hope you found it useful and I hope to speak to you again soon. Take care and goodbye.